I just love making geodes with resin. This one's got a new twist. I'm trying out a different method and the results are just great. Check out how to do it yourself. Hi everybody, it's Janet here for Moon Cusser Art. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't done so already, I would like to ask you to go ahead and subscribe. Hit that button in the lower right hand corner and you'll be able to be notified of all the tutorials that I put up. I'm going to be starting one of my geode projects today. I just got ship to me some of this beautiful crushed glass from Sia and it's this gorgeous pink color I believe I'll have to look it up I'll, I'll put the name in the description box for you but I'm gonna look it up I believe they call this lavender but I call it magenta Look at that, it's gorgeous. So that was my inspiration for this piece. They also have some of their gold glass. I'm gonna be using that along with some beads from Michaels. These are bead landing. These have just a very light pale pink color to them. I'll also be using some of these crystal points from Bead Gallery. Those are also from Michaels. And some of the colors that I'll be using in this work, this is Perlex, it's a mica powder. This is called Interference Gold. It has just a really light, light touch of gold to that. And I've also got some Art Tree Creations. This is their, whoops, lids loose. This is their Rose Gold. It's a dry pigment powder. I'll be using some recollections. This is their extra fine glitter and some resin art pigments. This is a luster pigment. And you can see, look at that sparkle there. It's pretty cool. When you flip it over to the other side, the sparkle is not that intense. So I'm going to be trying a new trick today for this piece using that. This is another color from Color Art, Wild Jasmine. Sorry about that. And I'll also be using, this is a Jacquard paint. This is Lumineer, and this one's called Pearlescent Magenta. So you can see we'll be going with a gold and a white and a pink palette. I'll be using some Tea Expert resin and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spray paint the sides of this panel. My favorite panels to work on are the ampersand. This is an all primed wood panel but in order to get really nice clean sides I always do my own spray painting finish on the edges that way I know exactly how it's going to end up. So a little bit of a uh, control freak but that's how we get good products. So let's get started on this piece today and hope you enjoy it. So the panel today, the ampersand panel is a 16 by 20. You can see it's got a nice support across the back. This is an MDF surface here. And I have always heard that MDFs can absorb water, moisture in the air. So if you live in a humid environment, it's a good idea to seal it. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to go outside and I take my handy dandy trusty Rust-Oleum spray paint. Um, I'm going to be spray painting the back first so that I can get down a seal coat. The last thing that I would ever want to have happen is for the MDF to warp from drawing in moisture from the air and that is definitely a possibility. So to avoid having that happen, I'm gonna take the extra step. When I'm outside spray painting, once this side is dry, it's a beautiful day, warm, no humidity out in the yard. So it shouldn't take long. Uh, once that's dried, I'll flip it over and I will spray paint these edges. And if I need to, I'll do a second coat on that. So that's gonna be the process. 
Okay, I am over at my studio table and this is my panel. It's all spray painted white, got the sides done in a satin finish and I will be putting a blind on that and then creating a dam to work on top of the panel. I am at this table because I wanted to try something different on this piece. A couple of things that I'm going to do. So check this out. This is one of my little discs that I make of my colors so that I know what the colors look like. I'll be using the Color Art Resin Art. And this color is from the Galaxy Diamond series of the Resin Art Luster Pigments. This is called Pomegranate. And when I pour these to make my color discs, okay, I, I'm using a little silicone mold. And I just, you know, take a little bit of leftover resin from doing another project, color it with the product, and then I have something to go by. Now, this was done with the Tea Expert resin, and this resin is a thinner type of resin. So it's great for working in molds and things like that. And one of the things that I'm gonna do today is I'm going to want to get this look. This is the bottom of my color disc and getting clear and not let you have that flash of light. And that's what it looks like. It's really sparkly and that's what I want to get. I don't want to get the look here because the sparkle just isn't there. It's a little bit, but not as intense as what I want. So in order to get that to be the top on my panel, I'm going to try using some of my geode molds that I have for doing coasters. So these are from, I believe I got these from Let's Resin. And I'm going to be pouring, sorry, trying to shuffle stuff around here. Keep that out there. I'm gonna be pouring into all four of these molds. Point with the epoxy resin from Tea Expert and coloring it with the Color Art pomegranate. Okay? When I do that, that sparkle side is going to be on the bottom of these molds. So when I take it out of the mold, I'll essentially here, right, pretend this is what I just filled, it's cured, pull it out, I'm going to be turning it over so that this side will be up and it'll be flat and I can attach it with a little bit of resin wherever I want to put it on my board. All right. I also need to make up my little uh, clusters with these beads. These are the nice crystal points from Bead Gallery from Michaels. Always check in my description box for the videos. I put all the links of where I get my products from. So these are from Michaels. And I'm going to be making my uh, clusters using these points. But I'm going to need it to fit into these spots because this is going to leave an opening. And that's where I want to set my crystal points into. But I can't do that when I'm pouring this. I'll just have that opening once I remove the resin from the mold. So what I did do is I traced these openings that I will have, drew them out on these pieces of paper, and room for the props again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put these little shapes down and then I'm going to cover them with plastic then I'm going to use my hot glue gun so that I make sure I stay with inside 
these shapes to build my clusters. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. And let's get going doing that. So this works really easy. All I have to do is place a little bit of glue on the point and start building these clusters. I watch my outline for my template and I wanna keep them in tight. I don't want any gapping in there. And they stand up real quick because that hot glue sets up fast. All this will be covered in resin once they get set into those openings. All right, I have measured out 10 ounces of tea expert resin, five ounces of the hardener, five ounces of the resin. Tea expert, you measure it in equal parts. So equal parts by volume. I say ounces because I use water to get my equal. Five ounces of water, 10 ounces of water. That's how I do it equal parts. You could use a cup and you could fill the cup with hardener and pour it into your container and you can fill your exact same cup with the resin and pour it into the hardener and you would get the same results. So it's by volume. It's not by weight. I'm just measuring my weight with my water to get my equal amounts. That's just how I do it. It might be sounding a little weird to you, but that's what I do. So I'm gonna mix this up. You wanna stir it for approximately three minutes to combine both parts. I like to take my stick and scrape the walls to make sure that I don't leave any resin unmixed you can see hopefully you can see there's some lines that you can when you're looking through it that's why i'm using a clear cup so that hopefully you can spot those if you can't spot them it's not because you're just not seeing them it's just because it doesn't pick up on the video okay but if you're doing it and you're looking through a clear cup you will definitely be able to see what I'm talking about. You can, it's like, um, you know, I don't know if anybody's a scuba diver, I am. You can see what they call thermals in water. It's kind of like seeing thermals in water. You'll see like the, the just the water lines there um, for the different temperatures of ocean water. So you can see already just how clear this resin is. It's really lovely. It mixes easily. Um, very few bubbles in there. Even though I'm stirring it quickly, I'm getting very few bubbles. So that's nice, especially when I'm using a mold. I want to not have to deal with any bubbles because you can't use a torch on silicone molds. It will melt the molds and your resin will get stuck in the mold and you don't like that and there's all kinds of reasons why not to so those are my tips for this i have been stirring my resin for almost three minutes as i've been yakking my mouth off at you guys telling you my little tips but like i said this is very nice clear resin look at how beautiful that's crystal clear lovely now, like I said, this is a thinner resin, so it's going to move nicely in these molds. Um, and we are going to I'll get one of these out of my way. I'm using a leveling board from Tea Expert as well. It has a level dot right in the center, so you know when your board is level. That's going to be key when you're using a mold. You don't want one to be, you know, lower and thicker on one end and no resin in the other end. I want them to be equal. Again, we're going to be using this color is the Color Art Resin Art Luster Pigment. This is pomegranate. And this will be the side. Whew, sorry about the flash. That's the side that I want to capture that look were my geode piece. So we're gonna get that in here. Get 
that out of my way. This is a dry pigment. So, very nice, pretty, pretty stuff. It's got a nice sparkle to it. It's kind of, uh, I'm trying to think how to describe the consistency of it in the bottle here. It's, um, it feels a little sticky almost when I put my popsicle stick in there, but you can see it falls off nicely. All right. So I want this to be really intense. Okay. So I'm going to be adding quite a bit of powder. That looks to me about, I would say about three teaspoons that I've dropped in there so far. So let's see how this colors the resin. And this is another reason why I'm using the clear cup is because it's going to give me the ability to get a better idea as to how opaque or transparent this is going to look. All right. Pretty color, don't you think? Look at when it's up against here. You get that magenta color coming out. But you can see there's still some of the specks I'm going to keep stirring that. I want them to dissolve into this resin, which they will. And then I'm still going to have those sparkling flakes that are part of this color. They're going to be in there. They, they will not break down, but that's, you know, that's where you get that twinkle from is from those little pieces. Okay. And when I do that, I'm thinking it's not quite dark enough. So people might be gasping, saying, oh my God, she's using so much color. But, you know, I want this to be dark and I want it to pop. So now I'm up to five teaspoons. Let's blend that in. This has a very long work time, this resin from Tea Expert. Um, I've worked with it many times in the past and I am able to manipulate and work the resin for, I've had it for up to an hour. I think there was one occasion where I was working in really small quantities and I was able to work with it for um, almost an hour and a half. So. Um, nice nice resin it's got a lot of great properties to it again this is not a resin that you would want to use for countertops it's just too soft for that but for this for artwork fantastic all right i'm going to be satisfied with that color so i'm not going to add any more Let's get the, you can see the bubbles. Can you guys see the bubbles are just coming right up to the surface and popping all on their own. See that? So I know that when I pour that into these molds, that resin is gonna let, I got a flake of my purple in there. It's gonna let that float right up to the surface and the bubbles are gonna pop and it's gonna look mighty fine. All right, so let's go on to time-lapse and let's pour that resin. All right, everything's poured. I'm gonna zoom in, hopefully you guys will be able to see that the bubbles are all coming up to the surface and they're slowly popping. 
That's all good. I like the color. It's really rich, vibrant. I'm going to show you too. I made way too much resin. I'm used to making coasters out of these, so normally I pour them a lot thicker. So I'm going to hurry up and figure out something to do with that leftover resin. I'm all right with that. Okay, now I'm going to, this is just a, a mister bottle that sprays out a really fine mist. I love to repurpose things that I've used. So I'm just going to, I don't want to use a torch or a flame, but I'm going to give a little mist across the top. This is just 91% alcohol. Easy as that. I'm just spritzing that across there to pop those bubbles like that. All right, and I can see them popping away. Let's get you down. I'm gonna get you a close-up look. All right. Let's see if I can. There's a bubble. Oh, it just popped. Trying to, let's see if I can get one of those reflections right in the middle of the camera. That might be nicer for you guys. And looking for a suit. So you can see, I, I'm not even finding any bubbles. It's looking good. All right, so you're going to notice, see how, let's try to focus in better. There you go. See the color line difference here? And that's just something that happens when you're using molds because the resin is going to pull in towards the center. It's gonna have a little bit of a variation in there, but that's okay, I'm all right with that. And I'm loving this color. And I'm gonna be pleased. I am gonna get my cover. I'm gonna cover these up and let them cure. I'm gonna go play around with my leftover resin, find something to do with that, and we will see you tomorrow. Well, good morning, everyone. Back down into the studio. You can see I covered these molds with a large Tupperware container. That way I make sure I keep them dust free. Works great. And I had some of that leftover resin in a cup, so I grabbed my molds and I have some of these. Let's get some light over top of them. There you go. There. Some different shapes. I like the heart. Anyway, we're going to pop those out this morning, see what they look like. I thought, you know what, maybe they'll have little spots on the, on the board along with these. So let's unmold. Okay, off comes the Tupperware, and there's those. Putting on gloves, I always recommend putting on gloves. One time when I was handling some pieces of resin in molds that had just finished curing, um, when I was taking them out of their molds, they still had a little bit of softness to them, and I actually left fingerprints on them, so. <laughs> It's just me, but these have actually been sitting here for two days, so I know they're nice and hard and fully cured. You're going to pop out easy. You can see, let's get it closer for you, get a little bit of shine. Notice the ring, and that's going to happen. It's just some of the pigments, the, uh, what they use in there to give it that shine. They're going to move slightly different in the resin as it cures and again in circular molds like this it's going the resin wants to like draw in on itself as it cures so anyhow that's that pops out of these molds nice and easy just like that and here comes the big ta-da moment ta-da get that sparkle sorry about the shine but it's beautiful. That's exactly the look I was going for. So, successful. All right. Well, let's finish popping them out.
All right, I got lots to work with here then. These are, came out just great. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six little geode shape, oh, seven little geode shape pieces. So we'll see what we do or if we even use them. I also have four discs, little discs. This one would not be part of the geode piece, but yeah, pretty little heart. Maybe I'll do something with that. Who knows? Had enough to fill the mold. So back to these geode pieces. I'm gonna move this out of my way a little bit. And here are the crystal clusters that we did. So obviously the larger ones are going to go in the larger holes. Get those out of my way. Because I did the hot glue on this plastic, they should just pop right off. That one's moving a little bit. That one would be careful of handling. Oops, might be out of screen there. Push that back further. There we go. I want to take them off carefully. If they're a little bit on the, you know, flexible side at this point, I'm okay with that because once I put them onto the panel, I am going to resin them into place. But they're standing on their own well enough that they are in good shape. Is that one of my long hairs there? Oh my gosh. Let's pop these off. They come right off. I'm just being really careful. There we go. All right. Bring this back into camera view. Okay. So now. I am going to check on the sizes. So the bigger ones obviously are gonna go into the larger holes. So let's start small. And don't recall the, there it goes. Right in. Do another little one. Ooh, I don't know. That one looks like maybe I'll have to do, oh no, there it goes. This is working out well. Love it when it happens that way. <laughs> Doesn't always happen that way. It's kind of like puzzle pieces. There it goes. Okay, so that project worked and I'm happy with the look. So that means I'm gonna be resining these pieces down onto the panel and then I will be dropping these into the center and they will get risen into place as well. So we've got a great start on this project. All right, I've got the panel here at my resin table and I'm just playing around with arrangements with these pieces and looking at, you know, hey, what, what looks good to me? I don't know, so those two are too much the same direction. If I go like that, then those two are the same direction. <laughs> so, you know, it's just one of those things you fiddle around with and you see what is it you like, you know, bring it in closer. That's what's nice about this. I'm not, if you guys know me and have been watching my channel, I like to try to control my situations as best I can with resin. Resin is a tough one to you know, manage and control and stay on top sometimes or many times. You just have to give in and let it do its thing. But because I'm a little bit of a control freak, again, this is what I'm doing. I came up with this idea so that I can really have good scale on this board. It's, it's only a 16 by 20, so it's not a huge board, but um, yeah, fiddling around, doing that. This is working out well. I want to include this one, but to kind of push myself a little bit, 
I'm going to put one here in a corner because I just feel like, oh, you know, maybe if I put it over there, it's going to show my skill a little more. You know what I mean? You want to show off when we can. So anyway, that's the idea is to put it here in the corner, leave a little bit corner exposed. Now remember, I'm going to still be applying. I have to blind my white edge on my board. So I'll be taping that off with the Scotch, uh, what is it called? Mm, sharp lines, the blue uh, painter's tape and I'll be blinding off the sides so that I make sure I don't get any resin on those. And then after I've put the blind on, I'll be building a tape dam so that there's an edge because I'm going to be containing the resin on top of the panel as I'm working. So if I cut this now so that it fits in this corner, it's gonna be up against that tape dam and it should give me a good look. I'll be using this on my geode here to make my lines and then I'll be using uh, probably use my Dremel blade it has a cutting blade on there or a, a, my Dremel tool should I say and it has a cutting blade that I can use so I'll probably do that and then I'll have one tucked into the corner rather than just continuing on with round shapes and having my sweet little pieces dropped in bingo around on the board not the right way there it goes so that's what i'll be doing next outside in the yard cutting that geode Right, back inside, and you can see, cut my edge. What I also did was I took a little uh, fine sandpaper, set it down on a tabletop, went back and forth, make sure it's nice and smooth. Same thing here, let's pull off. You can see there's a little bit of dirt still there from sanding more but a lot of it got wiped off with a towel so there is that and then let's see lovely perfect yay let me get you down so I can get you a close-up. Look at that. That's gonna work wonderful. Okay, moving on. Okay, I'm going to prepare the panel sides. This is a one and a half inch panel. Uh, it is finished with a smooth surface. This is from Ampersand and I spray painted the sides. Take my stuff off the top here. Oop, pardon my moving around a little bit. I even spray painted the back and that was to seal the wood because I live in New Jersey and it can get humid here and depending on where this piece ends up and the humidity i want it sealed so i don't get any warping the wood is kiln dried so that's a good feature but i'll be using the tape again the sides are one and a half inches this tape is one and three quarter inches so you can see it's actually bigger than the side I'm going to apply the tape all the way around on the sides because I want the sides to remain white and clean. I'm going to follow the top edge of the panel 
I'm not going to film it. Trying to film it and get that edge really good and level and even and all those lovely things that I like. It's too hard to try to film and get you a good angle anyway. So you're going to have to trust me that you can do it. And if I can do it, you can do it. Um, I use a razor blade to cut it at the end. I'll show you that little bit once I have that on there. But let me get that on and I'll give you a look in a bit. Okay, I have my blind on. You can see this is the 3M Painter's Blue Tape. This is called Sharp Lines Multi-Surface, number 2093. It's my favorite to use. And I can rub my finger and I don't feel the tape at all. That's exactly what I want because when I remove my tape dam, which is not there yet, I will want it to roll over the blind tape, okay? So that way, that's how I get those clean edges. Look down the line, looks good, all right? So now, I'm gonna put on the dam. Whoops, almost forgot. I'm going to burnish with my well-loved Sharpie that I've burnished all the print off of it. <laughs> it's plastic. It's a nice hard plastic tube and I'm just going to take that and I'm going to rub to create a little bit of friction that warms that tape up a little bit. Make sure there's no bubbles there and that's going to burnish it down in place and I don't have to worry about the resin getting under there. Okay? Okay. The blind is on. You can see most of the tape, it's a little, you know, I would say that that's maybe three-eighths of an inch above the surface. You can see the shadow line there, right? All the way around. And then here's the little thing that I do. This is a little uh, pearl of wisdom. When I'm done, I fold the tape back so that I create this little tag and if you've ever tried to remove tape when your fingers are inside of the latex gloves and you're trying to grab the tape and get it going so that you get that nice rollover, you want to have something that you can grab. So I started putting these little tabs in there. Ding, ding, ding for the win. Okay, back at the resin table. I wanted to show you, again, these geode pieces. When you pour a geode in a silicone mold, you get a lip edge. Can you see that right there? That's the lip edge. So I went outside and I used my palm sander, set these on a soft cloth, and just placed the sander right on top and sanded that down. So now I, I was concerned I was going to have like a bubble issue, Ooh, too close, like a bubble issue if there was too big of a pocket under there. It's also going to allow the resin that I'm going to pour to hold these in place, get a little bite on these. And again, they're going to be in this direction. So um, I thought that that was just one other little plus that I could do. So you can see it's got a little bit of a shiny, but then it's got that sanded edge. So I'm sure I'm going to get a nice bite and hopefully I'm not going to get bubbles popping out from under there. If I do, yeah, we know how to deal with that. Okay. So, but you know, it doesn't hurt to be a little more cautious. So I'm going to, here's my cut one. Let's get a look. It's going to go right there. Bink tight onto my tape. I love it. This is going to be perfect. And we're just going to, you know, plunk these down and have some fun. Okay, let's go. I've batched up some of the Tea Expert resin and I'm applying it to the back of the geode pieces using my popsicle stick. This is the most important one is getting it in that corner, but that worked out perfectly. So I'm just going to continue to do the same thing to the rest of the geode pieces. 
making sure that I get it all the way up to the lip edge. Once I turn it over, any of the resin is going to run and it should fill in and seal that tight down to the board. There we go. Now I've colored the leftover resin with the same color as I used for the geode. So it's the color art resin art there from their luster series, the geo or the galaxy diamond pomegranate. And now while that's still wet, I'm going to drop the crystal clusters that I made into those openings. They fit very nicely. And now I'm going to be using, this is uh, from Pebio. It's called CERN Relief. And I use this for an outline. This is the metallic gold. And that's to try to control any of the gold resin that I pour on the board. Now the outline is all dry. It only took about an hour. I batched up four ounces of the Tea Expert resin and I've tinted it with the Art Tree Creations. It's a dry metallic powder, rose gold. I have the gold in a paper cup and I do that so that I can pinch it and pour a nice thin line filling in these voids. Using the popsicle stick and then a toothpick, I work the resin until it fills the gaps right up to that Pebio CERN relief line. Gonna pour a few extra little blobs here and there. And here's a little peek of the board up close from my side. It's looking pretty good. Love that pink and gold together. Okay, we are back at the resin table. Give you a quick peek at how everything's looking here on the board. I'm pretty happy with how the gold laid down. You can see I've got a little bit of a lip edge, but that's going to be just fine. I have no worries about that. You can see there's no bubbles, and that's from doing that last minute spritz with the alcohol. It just makes everything look great. This, uh, color gets a really nice it's just a beautiful beautiful trying to get that catch that there's that shine it's fantastic really just incredible stuff so we're doing great here i've got this one here i don't know what i'm gonna do i don't know thinking about what i'm gonna do for that thing i like it just thinking about what i want to do my free-formed pieces came out fantastic because the resin was so thick it really held its spot. So happy, happy, happy. And now I'm going to get ready to pour a ring around the gold areas. Okay, so I'm going to just everywhere the gold is, I'm going to give it a lip edge of the pink. This is an acrylic paint, sorry here in the light for you. It's an acrylic paint. This is by Jacquard. It's called Lumineer and it's a light body so it's a little bit on the thicker side. This is a metallic acrylic. Pearlescent magenta and I've already done a test with it so it's, you can see it's got a nice little shimmer in there and that's what's going to go right up against that gold. I think that's going to look good. And I've got it all batched up here in the cup. I made three and a half ounces, probably too much, but I would rather have too much and use it for something else than have not enough because once you've tinted, your colors are never going to be the same unless you've measured exactly. And I didn't, I just poured the paint straight from that. Keep your percentage at less than 10%. So if you've got three ounces here, you make sure you don't do too much in there. And then I'm going to be transferring it into this squeeze bottle. And that's how I'm going to apply it down around these spots on the board. It really gives me some nice control. 
because it's an acrylic ink that has water based so that can make my resin set up faster so I'm gonna get going and we'll see how it goes so you can see using this squeeze bottle gives me a lot of control and I can lay down a uniform line of the light pink color really makes that gold pop here we are the next day again and all the pale pink or it's not really pale pink but the pink that we added is all on there very nicely I'm liking the way the colors are coming together on this I just got done batching another four ounces of the Tea Expert resin. I'm going to be tinting this one. This is a, it's like a, it's looking yellower on the camera than it really is. Let's move over to some better light. Uh, it's still kind of looking yellow, but anyway, it is a kind of like a pearl white that has a gold tint to it. So that's what's going to be filling in these voids here. I'm going to get that laid down. This is, whoops, sorry about the shadow. This is Pearl X number 674, their interference gold. And I think it's going to look lovely on here. Comes in, say, mica powder from Pearl X. And that's what I'm going to be adding in here and pouring. Let's go. Well, my apologies. My camera kicked off because a text message came through and it turned my camera off. Anyhow, I poured the Pearl X Interference Gold, filled in, used my pop stick to move it up to those pink lines. Very pretty. I'm happy with the color. It's got a great look to it. I use the heat gun to go around and pop all the bubbles. You don't want to use a torch because of the paper tape dam. That'll set fire. Yes, I've had it happen. No fun. <laughs> and, um, but it's looking good. So we're going to let this cure and we'll see it tomorrow. Before I go, I wanted to show you that my tape dam is holding up well. Not a single leak. You can see through the tape. Kind of cool. You'll see that as the piece progresses as well once the tape dam comes off. So here we go. All right, the Pearl X, the interference gold is all cured. Got some really nice shades in there coming up. There it goes kind of yellowy over here where the light's a little bit brighter. Draw back, it changes. There you go. See now it's white. Now it's gold. White. Gold. White. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're on to another stage of this piece. It's going to be a fun one. At this time, we're going to be adding some crushed broken glass. They call this color lavender. I call it magenta. I think it's going to be the perfect color to add in here. I'm also going to be adding their gold. This one, um, yeah, looks like it's going to be a really nice match for that rose gold that I put down. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to be batching up a little bit of the Tea Expert resin, adding some of this into the resin and making it just, just barely wet. I wanted to um, just be able to be dropped on around these quartz clusters that I built up and tucking in. You can see there's kind of divots in there, which is not a problem, exactly what I expected. So let's get going and get this bling on. I just wanted to show you the uniform sizes of these little tiny pieces of glass. Really nice sparkle. Okay, so we're just going to add a little bit of resin to the glass and then I'm not going to lie to you, this part is pretty tedious. I'm using my popsicle stick and I'm pushing it in underneath those crystal points, sometimes using a toothpick to arrange them nicely, but it's all worth the extra effort. You want it to really build up and show the dimension 
underneath these crystals. It just adds to the effect. I put the rest of the clear resin into another squeeze bottle. And I'm using that to squeeze out a nice thin line surrounding those geode shapes. And then I'm sprinkling, loose sprinkling on some more of the Sia glass. This is their gold. And just using that little tool to just sprinkle that on top. Well, you can see, I think you can see, I've cleaned up all the loose pieces of glass. I'm touching it carefully because it is sharp. So I don't want to cut myself. That looks pretty darn good. Happy with that. Whoop, too close. There you go. Better look. It's all really looking quite nice. I am going to be removing the tape dam. And if you look, you can kind of see it there. Let me get a, something to point. So when I have a tape dam, you get a lip edge, right? It's just like when you're using a mold, your resin goes into the mold and, you know, it wants to be attracted to the side. So when it cures, you get a little bit of a lip. So at this point in the project, I'm going to remove that tape dam and then I'm going to go outside and I'm going to sand those lip edges off. All right? Not going to film that. It's messy, pain in the neck. Today is sweltering with humidity here in New Jersey. Lovely. So I'm going to go get that all off of there, clean it up, and we'll be back. All right, I'm back into the studio. I wanted to just show you the lines, or I should say the, the ridge, that lip edge has now been removed, sanded it down smooth. I used a uh, 400 grit paper to get it nice and smooth. So that's how that looks. I did use a towel to cover the entire surface. I didn't want to get any dust settling into these clusters or this. That would have been a pain in the neck to clean it out. So I just laid a towel over the, end, the um, piece and then just lifted, folded back the edges so that I could work on them. So they came out really great. I then used a soft cloth, removed as much of the dust with the cloth that I could use forget I should say sorry and once I did that then I went back with some isopropyl alcohol on a paper towel and wiped it down carefully to remove any dust particularly like in this area here it was pretty tedious but it'll be fine so now I'm gonna add a ribbon of some fine glitter onto this um, it's a no-name glitter. Once upon a time, I sent away for a free sample of these glitters. And I'm going to be using one um, because I, I just like the sparkle of it. It's pretty intense. So I'm going to batch up a little bit more resin, add the glitter, and then I'm going to get a plastic bag and I'm actually going to pipe a line of the glitter uh, onto my areas that I want to see that sparkle. All right, here's the resin with the glitter sitting in a plastic bag inside a cup. I'm going to let that sit uh, probably, I think I'm going to let it sit for like a half hour. I want it to, a uh, couple of things, let the bubbles come up to the surface, which, sorry, I can't get it. Okay, let's see. Two bubbles on the surface there. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, the bubbles are starting to come up to the top, so I'm going to let it do that, and I want it to thicken. Um, the worst thing I could do right now is if I put this uh, right onto the board, it's just going to go really flat, and that's not the look I want. I want this to be like a raised line of resin with the glitter in there. So I'm going to let it sit, let it get thick. I'll be coming back and checking it to make sure it doesn't get too hot sitting in the cup. Once it's ready, I'll close up that bag, snip off 
a tiny corner and then I'll start piping. All right, so I'm just picking up that plastic bag and squeezing and I made a very small snip so I've got a little opening and it's working really well to get these lines drawn out here. Just doing whatever I feel looks right. It just adds another dimension and a touch of bling. Looks great. All right, I brought you around to my side of the table. It's the next day. Everything is cured. I like this pop of color. It really kind of brightens the piece up. The lines went a little wider than I had hoped, but I'm still happy with them. I pulled off my little tape dams because I wanted to get the color to move over the edge a little bit. There you go. I got a little bit of a lumpy lump there, but that's okay. As I'm going to start drawing on my marker lines. I have a few markers over here. This is a new one I'm going to give a try. This one's from Craftsmart. It's the, their metallic paint pen. It is oil based, um, but the pink is exactly the pink that I want to give a go. So I'm going to play with that one. I also have um, Deco color. This is their premium metallic gold. This is the chisel tip, so a nice wide band on that one. And this is, oh, come on, Craft Smart. And this is my standby metallic. This one is just like drawn, drawn with gold. Anyway, whoops, sorry about the finger there. So let's get doing that. I'm gonna put you on time lapse because it can get tedious and slow. Looking pretty good. All right, so putting on the lines, there's no rhyme or reason. I did go around the gold uh, and use that gold marker. There were a few spots where the Pebeo line was exposed, so I wanted to cover that up with that gold. You need to keep priming your pen by pushing the tip in. I used a chisel tip, a fine tip, and honestly, that pink that I got from Craftsmart, eh, it's okay. Not real crazy about it, but it's there. All right, all the lines are on. It's good. Found a little spot over here when I was doing lines. Got a little bit of this. Kind of, I don't know what the heck happened, but there was just a little bit of glitter sparkle in there, so I scratched it off. No worries, when I flood coat, that's going to disappear, so I'm all okay with that. Anyhow, um, I put another tape dam on, and I burnished it tight. I will be doing the flood coat now, and yeah, once the flood coat has set up, for a little bit and take off the tape. You should get a nice round over. Let's go. I like to do the flood coat so that I'm sealing in those marker lines. If somebody goes to clean the piece and rubs it with a soft cloth, the marker lines could rub off. Um, the oil-based ones are pretty good about staying put, but don't want to take any chances. And I'm also sealing in all those points. I start by working on the clusters, ensuring that they're completely covered, and a heat gun pops the bubbles. All right, I pulled the cover off so that I can remove the tape damp. It's been one hour since I did the clear coat. And then I'm just going to run around the edges with my torch and use my finger glove to smooth any of the resin that's rounding over, it'll just kind of curve and start to drip around the edges. And I want to make sure that I get it uniform and coated all around those sides. Okay guys, it's all cured. I have my top coat finished. Got my heat gun ready. 
I'm going to be using that to remove my tape blind that I put around this wood edge on the board. I have somewhere along here, I can't see it right now. Somewhere along here I have my seam, so that's where I'm gonna start peeling. I'm gonna use the heat gun to warm up the resin. This was poured last night, and I wanna say around four o'clock last night. It is now eight o'clock in the morning. So, um, what's that, uh, 16 hours. And uh, you wanna get the tape off early on because if you, the longer you wait, the more it cures. So at this point, it's gonna be easy to warm up with the heat gun and get that off. And we'll get a look at those clean sides. Let's go. All right, I like to put my gloves on, make sure that I don't uh, leave any fingerprints in the soft resin. And I just warm it up just a little bit and then go back and tug I do kind of a rocking motion as I pull the tape and that seems to help it. I don't know. It's just what I do. What can I say? But it comes off nice and clean and you can see as I pull off the tape, I've got those great clean sides. Here it is out in the bright sunshine today. This was a really great idea by using these geode molds to create the clusters around work fantastic. The colors from Color Art are really wonderful, as well as the glass from Sia and of course the resin from Tea Expert. Everything will be listed in the description box with coupon codes if you're interested. And if you enjoyed seeing this one, I hope you'll come back next time to see what's happening here on Moon Cusser Art.